All right, so today, uh, today's a today's a little bit of a weird one. Got no working fish finder, and I'm out here uh, checking out some stuff I haven't fished in a long time. Uh, about two miles out, so uh, we are going to wing it. Oh, uh, winging it's deadly. Uh, I'm just gonna fish off my GPS, man. We're almost there. So uh, let's see what I can do. <laughs> I don't know. We'll try. sure what this is. Don't feel too small. Not bad. Well, we're on the board. Nothing decent. On the board. The blind toe tug. And uh, that's a male, not a big one really, 18, 19, but uh, another one of these yellowish golden tocks. Got a cool coloration around here, man. Take it, man, I got fishing totally blind, so. Yep. All right, well, it's something, right? Get my togs on, but we hope for this miracle Toe tug event. Oh man, that wind is brisk, man. First tug. Hopefully, one of many. Tog, man. Red. Red. Not quite the tog. I believe that's an overslot. We don't want that. I'm good on the redfish meat. I could put him back, but he's probably about 26, 27 at upper slot range. Truly. Most beautiful fish out there, man. These guys really, really pull. Oh, the good thing about a cold northwest breeze, it's not gonna fill the seas at least. It's funny how the reds and the and the uh, tog came out of the exact same area. It's like the dominant species kind of hang together. And then maybe the secondary species might hang somewhere else. Keep dropping on number three here. That's all I'm doing. Number the lucky number three mark. Shitty there. Maybe a ringtail. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's a ringtail. Pinfish, scup, they're all very close. They got sharp teeth so they can chisel away at your hard baits very effectively. It might be a black drum, I guess. Some sort of drumish. That's a pretty nice red, man. Hey. Cool. That's some redfish. Oh. Look at that fish. 
fish. Look at all that, all those worms, all that stuff on them. And they are beasts. Thank, thank him for the tug. Yeah, two reds, one tug. Not too bad. This is like my version of ice fishing, <laughs> basically. It's a toad. Oh, red man. Well, it looks like I gotta keep this one. I blew out his stomach. Let me just make sure he's a legal size one. I think he is. But I think we uh, we gotta keep him. So all right. He's a better eating size than the last two. We could keep him. 19 and a half. It's a good size drum to eat anyway. Got a red, and then we got some tog action. Makes you really wonder how how necessary all those fancy electronics are at times. We've done okay here. Honestly, I think I might have done better here today than I've ever done before. But you know. This is all anecdotal evidence right now, though. Oh boy. He woke up. That's gotta be red. Maybe it's a top. I don't know. I don't know. Could be tog, bro. Tog a tog. Ooh, yeah, buddy. Tog a tog. Man, he's just wide. He's not that long. He's got a pretty, pretty girthy uh, base to him. Not a bad male. Four or five pounds. Got some pretty good shoulders on him. Right. Doesn't have too much length to them, but serious shoulders. Pretty good fishing overall, man. Especially with no working depth finder. Gonna get out of here pretty soon, but figure get some fun underwater footage before calling it. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, not bad at all, man. 
uh, wind flopped out, but I gotta get going today. So maybe I'll come back out tomorrow. I gotta see if I can fix this thing. So what do I bring out on a trip like this? Um, so it's a pretty cool question. So here's what we got. So that's a dozen crabs back there. Spooly, really bare bones. Safety stuff since I'm two miles off the beach. I've got a bilge pump. I've got a water. I've got a first aid kit. I've got a box of jig heads. My marine radio. Um, flag. I got noise making. I got some soft plastics. I'm sure I would have tried to jig a little more aggressively. Box of jig heads. That comes out with me. Um, typically, it always does. Variety of different heads from quarter ounce, ounce and a half, right? That's the rig with gold plastics, all that stuff. Uh, here's the business box for this time of year. Uh, I wouldn't leave home without this sort of stuff with me right now. Uh, it's just this is the type of fishing that's just that productive. Got some small jigs here, half ounces. Um, I think those are either laser mill laser minnows or cabela's real image jigging spoons. If those jolt head porgies are around. And just in here is a box of uh bottom sweepers for tog, redfish, sheep's head. And in here I just got a couple three quarter ounces, some one ounces, and some half ounces. And uh for various different depths and bait sizes. So this is the important box right here, <laughs> at least for uh, the winter months. Well, the fishery's going to change soon, real soon. Um, I think we'll be uh, on bluefish and stripers within a month. So this is probably, this type of fishing's winding down till uh, probably summer on that sort of structure with that sort of methods. You know, so reds and tog are the winter uh kind of the winter guys you can do this with here it's just it's consistent too man um back water is not too consistent right now the brackish striper stuffs you know catching fish same size <laughs> as these tog and uh, they don't fight as hard um uh, right now at least but we'll start as soon as that that uh we get towards 60 those bluefish should show up so i'm headed back towards the beach so that's not too bad it's a tale of two types of fishing, right? The psychological game to catching fish. But that being said, I took notes of where I caught all those fish, that's for sure. And when we come back with working uh, electronics, we'll give it another go. So I hope you enjoyed. I had a good time. Uh, smiles all around. It's warming up now, getting into the 50s. Good times.